I have cracked it. But not everything is as it seems. Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today I'm back with these Mariano Tackler throwing darts. So these things here, look at those bits of nastiness. Now I did a film on these recently and I couldn't make them work properly. I couldn't make them work reliably, but I'm smiling today because after considerable work, I have nailed it. But also some of the lessons I've learned of this, I think will be really useful on other sort of string related throwing projectiles. So let's go throw them and then I'll talk you through the changes, how and why and, well, a little bit more about them because these are not quite what they seem, I think. Down on the range now to actually show you this thing working. Oh, goodness. That was a nice one. So our GoPro is out at about the 40 meter mark. So as you can see, Actually, nice to get it to work. Oh, so that actually that last one, 45 meters beyond the GoPro. It's beyond the GoPro, so that's a good throw. So we'll go again, prove my point. Oh dear, that was lovely. Yeah! Well, here I am behind target, and I have got a smile on my face because these throwing darts, I have cracked them. I've got it, I've nailed it. Took a while. So we have the GoPro at 40 meters. They're all clustered around that. And then the furthest one actually is 45, 46 meters out. That is a heck of a throw for A, somebody who can't throw that well, and B, a handheld throwing dart. That is quite a result. Now the thing is, I think there is a mystery here. So what I'm gonna do first of all, is talk you through how I managed to do it, because that is interesting step-by-step -step process. And the next is what are these things? So let's go right back to the beginning. I was sent this picture from a 1433 book uh, by a guy called Mariano Tacala. De Ingenesis is the name of the book. And there you can see what looks like a stick and a string and a dart. Interesting to me because that's sort of effectively like atlatl type technology in Western Europe uh, in the medieval period. I didn't know they did that. And so that's what sparked my interest. And then I looked at it and I thought fletchings halfway down the shaft. Well, that's really quite peculiar as well. Throwing string, throwing stick, well, a little bit more normal at least if you're looking outside of western european culture so i decided to put my head to it and have a go so i'll talk you through my development process of how i got from doesn't work to does work really quite well so i've used throwing sticks and throwing strings before so you could do it on a smooth stick so i tied a knot in the end of my cord and i wrapped it around just like that and a little bit of friction, you pull tight, a little bit of friction and a little bit of tension on here, doesn't move. But there was something peculiarly fiddly about this and it kept slipping and not really working very well. And also intellectually, I'm thinking, you know, in the heat of battle, you want something a bit more positive. So what I did is I cut this groove around here. And I thought, well, what that will do then is that will lodge the string and it will make it a lot more secure and reliable. And it did lodge the string, but then actually what it did which I wasn't expecting at all, is it put a spin on this. And of course, if the energy is being used for spinning the arrow around, the dart around, it's not being used for making it go forward. If it did spin it, which it often did, it would halve the distance or maybe even a third the distance. So I abandoned that. Then I realized that the knot on the end of my cord was changing size. It was getting pulled and, and under tension and that was changing. That was messing up its release and for whatever reason these are really sensitive and I think probably because of their fletching layer. So I changed the knot to a little wooden bead. That improved matters a lot. And then I went back, a bit of a tail, to going around the shaft like this. But it still left me with it being a little unreliable, it would slip sometimes. So then I just put here a little groove on one side and then what you do is you wrap your cord around and it goes in there a bit like the knock on a 
bow. And so now you have a really solid, powerful lodge into that little groove. You have your bead here, which holds it all in place. You got your tensioners before, but this time it seems to hold it more securely. All it was, was that tiny little addition of a groove there, and it changed it from hardly ever works to pretty much works all the time. Nice. Practice, practice, practice. Ooh, lovely. And you can get a little bit faster with a little bit of practice. Not so good. Sometimes it doesn't help to be too vigorous about it, like I was just then. Nice though. I did a film recently with Matt Easton about this here. It's one of the Weird Weapons films. And I showed him this picture, another one from Deingenesis. And he looked at that word there and he said, oh, I can't quite read it and nor can I, but it looks a bit like plumbata. And it does. My medieval Latin's not great, but it looks like that. However, that got me thinking. And I thought, well, actually, you know, this was the time of the Renaissance, the early Renaissance, 1433. And this was another setup that came from Deingenesis by Tacola. And it shows five darts on the inside of the shield. This has absolute parallels with what Vegetius was talking about in his treaties with Roman soldiers having five plumbata on the inside of their scutum. Now, these ones here are mentioned, or at least the Kestros, the Greek throwing dart, is mentioned by Livy in some of his work. And I could be wrong, but I have a feeling in some of the work that I've read about Kestros that the fletchings are part way down the shaft, they're not all the way at the back. These fletchings are part way down the shaft. And I wonder if what's happened actually was that Tacula was reading some of the ancient treaties, Vegetius, Livy, whatever, and he was reinterpreting what he was reading in his thoughts of the day. Probably a lot like what I do when I look at a reproduction is he takes what he knows and he adds it to what he thinks might be and he comes out with something at the end. In the case of these two, maybe this was a thing, but I've never seen it anywhere else. In the case of these, well, the fletchings halfway along are kind of a little bit weird. I don't really get it. Some astrophysicist out there, I'm sure, will explain it to me. But for me and my tests, it hasn't really worked that well. They work, but I'm pretty sure if I put the fletchings on the back, they'd work better. Now, if we have a look, a final look, at this picture from the Ingenesis here, we look again. The length of the stick and the length of the dart and the fact that it's on a flexible cord means you could not throw this. This wouldn't work. It just wouldn't work. So you have to shorten the stick down, you have to shorten the cord down, and then we can get it to work. And what I mean by that is look at this. So if we set this up now for throwing, I couldn't have that stick any longer, or that string any longer. You can see where it is. That's as long as it can possibly be. But the picture shows it much longer than that. And I'm thinking that what he's thinking is reading the word sling, and he's thinking staff sling because there were staff slings around when he was around. It was a common weapon. And so I think he has put together, for this picture here, he's put together his ideas of the staff sling and the kestros, the Greek throwing dart. And I think that that is where this is from. And I think that this is his idea of a medieval version of what plumbata would be. That's my guess. So let's go through this again, just to finish up. And I think we'll call that a day. Here we go again. Oof. Oh, straight down on top of the horsey. Because I think these were anti-horse in the medieval times, because although these might be a little bit made up by Tacola, the whole concept of a fletched dart with a big broad head is very medieval. Oh, good throw, but offline. So as we can tell, I need practice. Does it work? Heck yeah, it works. Was it real? Nah.